Hi, it's May the 30th and it's Tara Green here talking about the big aspects of the day. Pretty complicated day today. The moon has entered Aquarius. Oh, the cat said hi. <laughs> Want to say something, Gala? Okay. Moon entered Aquarius. Got a little cat meow reaction there. Uh, so the elemental energy changes as the moon changes sign because everybody's affected by the moon. We're all 70% water. So Aquarius, air sign, detachment, get to see the big picture, okay? Um, so people can be a bit non-committal and in their heads when the moon is in Aquarius, right? Okay, so a couple of major aspects today between the planets, Venus in Gemini, where she's duplicitous. Um, you know, Mercury has just gone retrograde 6.34 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so we're definitely gonna start to feel that everything's slowing to halt, feeling that grind. Now, because Venus is in Gemini, Mercury being there, and Venus and Mercury are very close together, we're gonna to be affected very strongly by this. And um, I was just looking at the aspects of uh, Mercury going retrograde, but not Mercury conjunct Venus. So again, it sounds a little bit trite, but yes, you will hear from old lovers, old friends, old acquaintances, uh, people from your past, definitely who you spoke to, who you talked to, who you conversed with, who you uh, debated with, who you argued with uh, during this Mercury retrograde, okay? So Venus, uh, the planet of love, of beauty, of harmony, of the arts. She loves to talk. She loves to be the social media queen. She loves to flirt, is in conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. So Pluto and Capricorn represents the soul. It represents the shadows. It represents everything that we haven't integrated. Um, so remember, whenever you think about one sign, you always have to think about the opposite. The opposite of any sign is the shadow aspect. So when Venus is in Gemini, her shadow aspect is Sagittarius. So are we speaking the truth? Do you trust Venus and Gemini? Does she ever speak the truth? She might say something out of one side of her mouth and then change her mind. You might think she's just, you know, very flirty and flighty, um, but she's kind of got to try on all kinds of people, situations, change her mind about what she's wearing a million times, you know, that kind of thing. She has to try on a lot of people, okay? As to her nature, you know, every sign has its nature that it needs to be true to. Uh, Pluto and Capricorn, you know, Pluto's continuing to take apart uh, establishments, uh, the plutocracy keeps getting control, you know, so this is where Venus rules values. So you have to make choices, uh, even though you don't want to with Venus and Gemini. So what do you really see is going on? Uh, I think that's a big uh, question here. So be careful about people who are trying to be manipulative or underhanded or, you know, some story that you're being told. You might want to think about it, debate about it a lot, okay? But it's a part that you may not really see because it is an inconjunct. Now, the Aquarius moon makes a nice trine to the sun in Gemini. You know, we're headed for another solar eclipse. We're in the eclipse corridor. The next one is going to be June the 10th in Gemini, 19 degrees, under some very heavy aspects, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, so again, good time to connect to people, Zoom, social media, whatever, see them in person, go for a big walk, just chit-chat, be outside, enjoying the weather, um, talking about all kinds of new ideas, being inventive, innovative, you know, march to your own drummer, you know, hang out with people who are weird, you know, embrace your own weirdness. Um, yeah, and look at things in a very detached perspective. So the moon will also sextile Chiron and Aries. So this is a good time to examine our wounds. Now there's a lot of talk about uh, mental illness wounds. I've, I've been saying for a long time before COVID hit that the whole world is PTSD. Uh, so now it's interesting that uh, Prince Harry and, and Oprah are talking about that, but that was a pretty obvious thing to see. So this will give us a chance to kind of be a little bit detached, maybe do a little bit of talk therapy, but don't get too much in your head about it because the real case is to go through the wounds, to take down the walls, to take down the armor, you know, where it's all tight-lipped. Uh, that's kind of an area that can be very defensive. So you want to take down that armor. Um, you want to feel safe that you can talk about these things, you know, without being seen as weird or going to therapy is weird. Everybody needs to do therapy. Everybody needs to reflect on their past, on their childhood on their parents on their sole purpose and why they were here what the state of the world is etc etc so the aquarius moon then squares uranus and taurus now this is a nice mm, they're kind of mutually um aspecting each other uh, uranus rules aquarius as the modern ruler of aquarius um saturn is the traditional ruler of aquarius so uranus and taurus again thinking in a new way with plastic, real resources, money, this is cryptocurrencies, um, but the squares are hard aspects, so there's some challenges here. I think the crypto market has been really challenged the last while, 
Um, but there could be some new innovative technologies for the Earth. Uranus and Taurus is, um, again, the Earth sign, the Earth Mother, Pachamama, and Uranus will bring new technologies to help the Earth, to heal the Earth, okay, without exploiting her. And then the Moon conjuncts Saturn, speaking of the old devil, that is Saturn. Uh, and so there, Saturn, the ruler of Aquarius, is also there. So both of these rulers are strong. Um, Saturn in Aquarius, it's a good time to tune into what Saturn in Aquarius feels like. Um, you know, this is a chance to feel the real expression. What does Saturn in Aquarius feel like? Because it's a cool sign, it's a cold sign, it's a mm, clinical sign. You know, what does Saturn in Aquarius feel like? Saturn rules the traditional history that we have to honor before we can innovate. Okay, this is also respecting elders, people who have uh, years of experience. You want to go to them and pick their brains, okay? Well, think and analyze old texts, old history, uh, study innovators, study pioneers, study heretics, study people who went against the grain, you know, rebels, revolutionaries, what went on in the 60s there, you know? And then the other big aspect is Mars and Cancer, Trine, Neptune, and Pisces. Now, Trines are all nice aspects where the planets are working well together. Uh, Mars and Cancer, the warrior is defending the mother, the home, the children, the emotions, the sense of nurturing and emotional safety. So Mars is not really considered strong in Cancer, but I would say he's home. He's the warrior who's come home to really get out of the war zone and to really uh, needing comfort, needing to feel safe, needing a lot of love, okay? Trining Neptune and Pisces is very beautiful, inspirational, spiritual, uplifting. Yeah, it would be a good day to really get in touch with a kind of a churchy, spiritual energy. You don't have to literally go to church necessarily. This aspect is at night, actually only in Pacific um, standard daylight time, but in the, on the next day uh, in Eastern and Greenwich Mean Time. But great for dreaming. You know, get into a nice long hot bath. Do, you know, run yourself a nice bath and put Himalayan salts in it and put the rose oil and the lavender and just soak, okay? Let that be a rebirth for you, okay? There's everyday rituals, simple rituals that you do. And if you really get into it emotionally, and with Mars and Cancer, everybody's been feeling all the feels. Um, yes, feel all the feelings. Let them come up. You know, do prayers. You know, ask for help. Call upon your guardian angels. Um, you know, this aspect's around 22 degrees. Uh, cancer, Pisces, so it also affects 22 degrees. Scorpio makes a grand trine if you have planets or aspects, or your ascendant is around those uh, degrees as well. So definitely a great sense to get in touch with your feelings, to write, to express poetry, beauty, music, um, very uplifting, you know, really connecting to the mother, connecting to the unconscious, connecting to the womb. You know, Mars and Cancer is the womb itself. Uh, and the womb is a very, the most sacred organ there is on, that, that exists. So get in touch with that. You may want to, you know, crawl into a fetal position and, you know, connect with the Great Mother. You know, connect with unconditional love, forgiveness, compassion, uh, as you go through opening up to your wounds. You know, that's really the sometimes the only way to do it, especially if you've never been mothered properly. Um, if you feel like an unmothered child, you know, there's that old sad song, feel like a motherless child. If you felt like a motherless child, then this is what you do. You go into the bath, you get into the ocean, you go into a river, you know, wash me in the river, and you call out to the Great Mother, uh, or Jesus, or whatever uh, version of that compassion, Green Tara, whatever, Kuan Yin, whatever you want to call her, to nurture you, to envelop you in her womb, in her loving arms, to nurse you, to give you the, the milk of human kindness, okay? So, all right, so I'm going to leave you with that, and if you want to get in touch with me, I'm at terratero.com. That's my website in process of being redeveloped finally at last. Uh, you can follow me on my blog at infinitynow.wordpress.com. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok even. And uh, looking forward to speaking to you. Blessings.